Welcome to Your Brand Express Podcast. I'm your host, CJ Aileen. And I'm Carl Aileen. And together, we will take you on a journey to where entrepreneurship meets culture and cool. So get ready to elevate and expand your entrepreneurial spirit as we explore the dynamic and ever-changing landscape of the business world. So sit back, relax, and join us as we bring to you the ultimate vibe and help you experience your brand like never before. Let's get it. Woo! All right, all right, all right, everyone. We are here with the man, the myth, the legend, C. Ray Knowles. How are you, my friend? Oh, man, it's so good to be back. So good to be back. I've been watching your stuff. I'm loving it. I got a lot to talk to you about, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Right on, right on. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate you sticking with us, man. And it was great having you on. Of course, we know CJ's not here. He's doing his thing. He's like, I mean, that's a whole other topic. You know, I'm, I'm proud of him. Um, he he is still part of the show, but sometimes I'll be a host. Sometimes he'll be a host. Sometimes right. we'll host together. So, right. but anyway, it's all about you, C. Ray. Today, that like rhymed. Like hey, that. yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that that rhymed too. Hey. Yeah. So we're, it was, you know, be, it was great having you back before. And I'm just so curious about what you've been up to now. I mean, so much time has gone by and I see you making moves online and I'm just so excited. So tell us, can we start with that? You know, just since our last interview, what have you been up to? Well, the coolest thing, uh, training experience I think I've ever had. I was invited uh, to go train CRI, which is a children's rescue initiative. Mm. Uh, the guy that runs it, his name's Bruce. Uh, mm. I met him in Montreal, and I'm not sure how many years ago, but I trained with him there, Russian Sistema, and he hit me up. He said, hey, we need our team's training to be something different, you know, and I know that you do Sistema, and you've got your own version of this, and, you know, we trained together. So I was like, yeah. So I was like, I knew that he did some type of rescue thing, but I didn't know <laughs> what it was. So I was like, I'd, I'd love to, and come to find out, it I was so blessed to be there. I mean, I was like, mm. it was, it was, it was, it was overwhelming. You, you, wow. didn't hear you didn't hear it. I mean, it was like, what these guys do is unreal. They are a rescue oriented and they go and they rescue sex trafficking um, victims and labor, um, uh, you know, that are labor slavery, I guess you'd say. Wow. And, uh, all over the world. I mean, and, and it's just amazing. I mean, the stories that they told was like, okay, we touch down, we get in this van and we're driving 10 hours across the desert, you know, to go grab these kids and take them out. Now, what's so wow. cool about them, what they do, their motto is rescue, restore and raise up. So what they do, wow. they, they rescue them, they restore their life. But then they support them until they grow up and get an education and all that. So they just don't rescue them. Mm. Yeah, that's the easy part, they said. Getting the money to rescue them. It's like they continuously pay for these children. Wow. And, and, and it's absolutely amazing. Let me screen share and show you uh, something real quick here. Yeah, uh, please do. So this is their <clears throat> website here. Um, and, and these are the, the, the children. The, and, and normally they're, um, well, they, they rescue adults too. But and it could be whole families, but they're around the wow. age of eight years old, you know, and one place in Pakistan at eight years old, they start shipping them out to brothels and terrorist camps. And I'm like, why at eight years old? Because they're too big to turn the bricks. So if you think about a brick and it's they've made a brick that's that's wet, it's sitting out in the sun drying. Well, these little kids are squatted, walking on the bricks and turning them so the other side can dry. And you can mm. envision two football fields full of bricks stacked back to back. Wow. And the reason they get rolled out is because they get too big and they crush the bricks when they step on them. Wow. Is that not uh, just unreal? So <laughs> super cool a group. I'm going to do some training with them. Um, because we did the teams training and what that was is where they were, people were being recruited to come in um, and be a part of the teams. Then we're going to go in January and do um, the, everyone's training. 
but there was guys yeah. in there. There was Navy SEALs. There was Marines. There was there was uh, nurses, doctors. I mean, just a, a crazy group. And as wow. as a trainer, to have you've got a guy that's got millions of dollars invested in in training, you know, as a as a SEAL, and someone that's never done any martial arts. Yeah. So how do you how do you tie it together? But th this is their motto, you know, mm. and, and it's it's just super cool. I mean, it was it that's was powerful. it was. Um, probably one of the most interesting and I, I am so grateful for that opportunity. I mean, to think that, that my training um, will impact the safety of these lives and the lives of these kids. Wow. And I've got to send you, I've got a testimonial page that these guys uh, um, wrote for me. Wow. And, I, and I'm like, it's, it's absolutely, I've read that. The first one that came to, came to me was a guy, he was, he was a founding member of Homeland Security. And I'm like, dude, I want to sign up for my own stuff. Mm. You know, I was like, that is amazing. He said, look, I've trained with all kinds of people and I've never had the type of training that you did. And he said, you're in love with what you do. Mm. You, he said, when you get in the mat, he said, and you start teaching somebody, he said, you turn into a different person. He said, it's wow. amazing. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me grab something. I'll be right back. It's right there. Yeah, sure, sure. Wow. So, so this was my... This was the course. It wow. is a mind map. Mind map, yes. So every day, we when we went to training, I laid this out on the table because this is everything I wanted to teach. Yeah. But I didn't know at what stage each person was. Mm. So I had to, so I wouldn't lose my way and I got everything that I needed to. I had that mind map. And every time I teach a big class like that, I get better, you know, yeah. and that's something we'll talk about in a second about doing zooms and going over stuff. But I right. get better because I look at that and I was like, okay, this guy's not understanding how I explain it. And I think of it like if I knew 15 languages, how much smarter would I be? You know, mm. every time I teach somebody, someone's not getting it. I've got to figure out another way to explain it to them. Right. And then when I do that, I grab my little pen, my mind map, and I go back in there and I put that in. And then that makes it better each time. I love so, that. Super amazing training. Was there nine days? So it wasn't a, no small deal. And it was amazing. Mm. So that's, a, that's the thing that's happened recently that is, is just great. And I'm so thankful to be part of the organization and, and helping them. Love that, man. I mean, that's powerful. That's one of my, on my, um, on my bucket list, I want to be able to support a group like that, do something to to support, you know, in, in just the fighting of human trafficking. Yeah, because I can only imagine my like my I have a daughter. You know what I mean? So it was definitely near and dear to my heart hearing about programs like that, you know, and that but, program seems so unique. Well, and it is I was going to try to bring it back up here. Oops. You know, being able to kind of just not just rescue them, but, you know, res restore and raise up. Whew. Yeah. And when you look at the numbers here, um, find it. here, look at this. Mm. 40 million people enslaved in the world right now. That's crazy. 40 million. I mean, you, you, you think about slavery and you're like, what in the world? You know, but now, I mean, mm. 24 million forced labor. You wow, know, this this is a big deal there, you know. Uh, wow, but four point eight people force. It's just crazy. Wow, and then when you see and, and and one of the stories uh, that they were showing, and, and we looked at a lot of videos, was yeah, it was kind of like a an open air market kind of yeah, you, you know, and you got the um the tarps over the walkway yeah. and the CRI team walks into this little restaurant and there's a little eight year old girl and her brother there and she's sweeping. Okay. Um, and so the, well, anyway, uh, they, they do what they do. Yeah. You know, um, I, I can't, I can't talk about that too much, but they're, they're, they're right. a great job. Yeah. And come to find out the girl was being used for sex at night. She oh cleaned gosh. all day. Eight years old. I got Good two dollars. I got two dollars. Yeah. You know, 
So these men and women that do, that go Breaks over and do these rescues, I mean, they are they 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 are amazing. It really is. Um, so we're gonna do heart. a lot of we're gonna do a lot of stuff with them. Hopefully, we can help them raise money. Um, yeah, there'll be a lot a lot to come. But the the um, they're top notch. Some of the best people wow. I've ever met. Wow, and forty million more than more than ever in human history. It says. Yeah, and when see this is this is the, our training book that we had. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got all the stats and they're really good. They did a great job, but look at this yeah. first page. Look at that guy. Mm. Pull that closer. <laughs> That's me. Hey, <laughs> hey, nice, nice. I, I, I got this and I was like, man, that is awesome. I'm thumbing through it and I look and I'm like, and I'm wow. on the first page. This is awesome. <laughs> first page. <laughs> man, I tell you, see, Ray, you're doing some great things, man. I phew, hats off to you, man. Thank you, you know, thank you. that's, well, that's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting because even living in our country, you get so, you know, numb to what everything going on with us and you, you kind of just, we could be in our own little bubble, but all yeah. the other things going on in our country too, but around the world, it's just like, what? Yeah. When we're reminded of it, C. Ray. Yeah. Well, that was, I was so shocked, um, mm. you know, and, and I, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I charged to go train these guys. And yep. when I left, I said, you will always have my services for free for the rest of my life. I'll never charge you again. Wow. Wow. You know, and it was, it was humbling. Yeah. To, to see that it was, yeah. To, what they did. And then, then the group that we trained, I mean, this is the whole book of everybody that came. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's 27 people right there. I think that's number 27. Yeah. 27 guys and gals that went through the training. Yeah. And some of the ones were like, this is this is worse than boot camp ever was, you know. And wow. at the at the end of it, some of the knife defense I did, um, because we had we had a test day, you know, and and I only touched one person out of twenty seven with the tip of the knife. Mm. And they they handled me. They did exactly what they're supposed to. And it was funny after the third person coming through, one of the directors looked at me and said, They got it. This is working. Nice. First young lady, since we, we had to go back mm. to back, uh, uh, three minute rounds type deal. And um, so I forgot to tell the first lady, you know, don't take me down. You know, yeah. I, I'm doing a prison type stabbing where I'm holding you and, I, and I'm, I'm going after you, you know. And she does the move and hooks it up. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I didn't tell her. And she down and slammed me. Like, mm. I mean, it was like you slammed me. I mean, it was like, wow. I was I, I, right then. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. That is <laughs> awesome. They got it. They got it. Nice. So, That's had crazy, some really right? cool people. Some pe people do security, like I said, some seals, some other guys. Um, and I teach in a way that, because, you know, I'm 189 pounds, you know, little dude, 5'11". Uh, don't look like I can do anything, but I can. But my, mm -hmm. my idea is no matter what your athletics is, whether you're a, a world champion wrestler or you know nothing, I can teach you something that will make what you got better. And if you know something, nice. I can make it work better. Uh, nice. and everyone that was there, I was like, Look, just have an open mind. We're going to have fun. I said, we're going to learn stuff. And I'm going to show you some things you've never seen. And it, it, was, it was just every single day was laid out and was perfect no one got hurt everyone trained hard um it's great I, like i said i'll send you those testimonies they're they're, they're just amazing i mean yeah that, that was great i so love that man that. and you know that nice. ties back into my core everything since you know since i was nine i've been doing martial arts right and all you know i'm an electrical engineer i've an electrical contractor all but all of this circles around i like to teach people how to take care of themselves whether it's health, whether it's fitness, uh, fitness, or whether it's martial arts, you know, uh, any type of weapon, that's that's what I do. I mean, that's that's I came out that way, you know. Mm -hmm. The first thing I wanted to do when I was little was karate, you know. Wow. And and I mean, I didn't care about any sports. My mom made me karate geese out of bed sheets, you know. Wow. Uh, I mean, that was it, it's always been there. It's just like, this is what you're going to do, and that's that's my calling. That's cool. That, you know, your calling. Cool. That's where we call it. That's where it kind of falls into the, you know, the daddy fight club that we had talked about earlier. Right. 
Daddy Fight Club. Yeah. Now, dude, first of all, dude, I mean, I I could definitely identify. I mean, you're definitely in a different arena. I I love what you're doing, man. I'm like, it's funny. I was thinking about the concept of boundaries and, you know, just it was a, it was on a spirit in like a spiritual conversation. Yeah. But the whole idea with boundaries is that boundaries are good. And the analogy I was I was I'm thinking about this lesson I'm giving for people. The analogy is, you know, the the classic uh, girl in a, in a horror movie saying, what's over there? <laughs> yeah. Ah! And I was my point was I, I used to like I used to like horror movies more. But now I got married and had kids. I'm like, no, because you know why? I got to be the one saying who's there. Yeah. I'm yeah. the one looking downstairs and saying, who who's down there? <laughs> well, I've you got know, friends so, that love horror, love horror movies, and they're like, "Didn't you like them when you were little?" I was like, "No, nah, they were stupid." <laughs> I'm not going over there, and I'm not going without a weapon, you know? Right? And I'm not, I'm not going to go where the weapons are, where the guy is. Yeah, but, no. you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but my point is, you know, it, you know, just the idea of being able to happen to have having to handle something, yeah, is 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 not easy, you know. So I, you know, with what you do, man, you save you save lives. Well, you know, you know how how this concept happened of Daddy Fight Club, it, mm. it, it's actually a two stage thing. What what happened yeah. was I was going to Lewisburg. It was 1989, I think it was, uh, and I taught a self defense course. Mm -hmm. Well, later on that morning, I get a call, three o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, you know, I'm asleep. I roll over, pick it up, and they said, "Hello, this is Officer Mills." from NC State campus is C. Ray Knowles there. And I'm like, I don't know if I know him. <laughs> you know, what do you need with him? You know, cause I'm sitting mm -hmm. there, I'm an hour away. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm not in trouble, but I am not, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. and, well, the guy I'm looking taught a self-defense class yesterday. And there's a young lady here that wants to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Yes, sir. I, I I taught that class. He said, "Hold on." He hands the phone, and she jumps on the phone and is screaming, "It works! It worked! It worked! It worked!" I'm like, "Oh, what worked?" She said, mm. "I got out at school. Her boyfriend went to state. She got out, and she got attacked. Mm. Well, she did exactly what I told her to do and dropped the dude. Okay, mm. um, because I, what I teach is so effective, and we'll get into that." that right. it will work for you, you know, because the bad person has got to get close enough for us to do what we need to do. Right. And they arrested him. He's in custody. And, you know, she went down to file a report and all that stuff. Well, they call her father. And it, it, the, the guy gets back on. He said, look, I talked to the father. And he said, thank you from the bottom of his heart. And please teach everybody you can this. Wow. You know, and that was my first self-defense class by myself. You know, I'd been in martial arts all my life and that helped my instructors and all that do it. But that was the right. first one I'm like, man, just yeah. think what would have been different if that girl didn't come to that three hour class. Yeah. Good night, and then man. what would that phone call been like to the parents? You know, what, what what's the repercussions of her being empowered now and on point and dealing with this or being in fear for her life. Would she quit school? Would she, I mean, what, what all would have happened? Right. Right. You know, so that was kind of the first phase before, and, and I had taught, you know, yearly taught classes, but I never got to the point that I feel like I could, I was doing what enough, you know? Yeah. Well, Jim Edwards, you know, a good friend of yours and mine, um, he called me up and he needed some help moving. And I'm like, I you know, live four hours away. I'm like, I'm on the way, dude, let's go. You know, and I get up there. Nice. And we have a great weekend um, and, uh, at the end of it. He's like, Dexter's um, children are going into high school. Will you teach them some safety stuff and some self-defense? I'm like, mm. yeah. He said, well, after breakfast, let's, let's do that. So we're outside in this outdoor breakfast little area and uh, they're over there cooking and I'm playing with the kids and Jim and Dexter are sitting over there and you know, Jim can be funny. <laughs> and they're they're giggling back and forth. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Yeah, you know, and I go back and do something. And finally, he says, "Look, this is really good stuff." He said, "I've trained a lot." He said, "This is good stuff." He said, "Me and Dexter wants to do it." I'm like, "Well, come on." He's like, "Oh no, we want a daddy fight club." Wow. 
so that's where the daddy fight club comes from everyone takes it as you know the in the basement fighting type deal but no it came from and and the concept is if you're familiar with, with uh law enforcement it's a train the trainer you know so yeah. you can't train everybody from every place so you bring a trainers in you train them they go back and train theirs so i'm like mm. well, that's kind of what i need to do with dads i need to train the dads and they can go back and train the family Ooh. So that's where that came from. And then, you know, he, I got home from that um, trip and he hit me. We usually talk, you know, at 4.35 in the morning. And he said, hey, Daddy Fight Club's available. Mm. And I'm like, okay. And then I, I said, if he thinks that I've got something here that right. I can push out to the masses. And, and my whole deal is I, I, there's seven people in my life that are here because they did something with me, you know, and the grace of God. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it's like, okay, I want that to be 70. I want it to be 700. I want it to be 7,000 nice. people that because they learned something from me, they're better off and they're here. And the key is when I leave that house and everyone that's in my house, I, I'll see you back in a little while. We got to make it home. You know, right. the, the motto is one life, stay ready. And that's, and that's, yeah. so that's how the daddy fight club came together. Man, that's solid, man. That's what a pow that's a powerful story. Uh, you know, shout out to, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh no, no. I was gonna say shout out to Jim and Dexter. That was it. Just give them a shout out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Love those guys, man. Love those guys. Yeah. What were we gonna say? Um, you know, it, it's up until this point, I've kind of been somewhat defeated in my purpose of it. Because mm. I couldn't get to enough people. Hmm. You know, and I've spent all this time. I mean, I've studied martial arts continuously since I was nine years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, and wow. all of that I've taken in with the mind of the engineer. Okay. Why does this work? How do I teach it? And what do I do if it doesn't work? You know, so then it breaks down to like in the Daddy Fight Club program. All right. I hate to get, I, I, you know, we get all kinds of classes and I'm not going to make you wait three hours to get to the point. I'm going to break this down to a super small section and I'm going to get you 80% there. The online course is to get you 80% there. Okay. The 20%, I've got it set up totally different than any other course I've ever seen. We're going to do live zooms and I'm going to have a camera on the mats and I'm going to have somebody and I'm going to answer your questions. Love it. If you don't think you're doing it right, send me a video. We're going to fix it. I'm going to get you as close as I can with that next 20%. And then after that, there's a three-day intensive course if you want to go really further. So now, is that in person? Intensive? That's in person, the three-day, yeah. Nice. I was going to yeah. ask you that, too, because I'm like, man, with what you did for the nine-day, do you do yeah. Wow. And, so and that cool. Came back, well, let's go back to Jim. Jim's like, okay. And he had a story, and I hope it's all, all right if I share. If not, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to tell him, um, but, <laughs> but he had a situation where he was in a parking deck and the way I remember it, he may have been in on the top floor of it and him and his wife were going to the car and a couple of guys approached and he said, I did something I know so wrong in the self-defense area. He said, I just didn't know what to do. I caught it by surprise and all these things, you know, yeah. and he said, that's when I see Daddy Fight Club, what he said, I'm fixing that problem that could have turned out really, really bad. Wow. And that was, that's kind of been that driving force. You know, um, I think I may have told you the other night, you know, I had a guy try to sucker punch me at a local venue four yep. times, but it's because of the situational mm -hmm. awareness, how I knew how to stand, how I knew what to look for. I read his, yeah. every time he tried, I was not even close enough, you know, so. And, and the biggest wow. thing is, is not to be have to do not to do anything that legally we have to worry about. I don't want to save your life and then you spend it in prison. Right. So there's always thank you. Use, <laughs> that, there's always that use of force that we have to deal right. with, and that's part of of the program too. Is we we're, we cover the legal side of it with a mm. lifelong um, police officer that teaches that and concealed carry and that does a real good. He's a good friend of mine, and he's like, oh, yeah, Great. I'd love to love to get dig into this with you 
I love that, man. So you teach, you don't only to help out with self-defense, you teach safety as well for Absolutely. all parties. When you look at this, this is the, when Jim asked me to teach the boys, I'm like, okay, mm. what, what do I need to teach? And I'm like, okay, first of all, situational awareness. Yeah. You know, my big deal with my dad, he said, uh, I want you, I said, how do I never get in trouble with you? There's a long story behind it, but I, basically he said, don't lie to me and don't surprise me. He said, mm. and look for trouble and leave before it kicks off. So at that mm. age, I thought, like, ah, we got to go, guys. Let's roll. You know, and everybody that yeah. was my friend, if I told you we're gone, if you ain't at the car, you're left because I'm gone. Mm. You know, so module one is situation awareness. It's, it's major. I mean, even I even run it on my phone. I've got a, 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 that green dot means for me to go to level one of it. And I got it there. So I will think about it. I got yeah. right there my everyday carry, what I've got to have. And then I got a picture of my wife. That's the reason I want to get back home. So everything that's right. important to fire me up or give me the motivation to do what I need to do. Well, right. then from that, I was like, okay, with the kids, what's the next thing? The sucker punch. Mm. Sucker punch defense. How do we deal with somebody? And just like that happened out, how do I deal with that? If they are punching before they punch that whole deal, super, super important. Right. right? Then I was like, okay, what's the next thing? Well, bad guys hang out with bad guys. You know, there's usually a weapon. And if it really starts, it usually goes to the ground. Yeah. All right. How do I deal with multiple attackers on the ground? How do I get back to my feet? So that deals with all of that. All yeah. right. Wow. So module four is, uh oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. It's on the site. Module Tech four stuff. is contact and contact control. That means once I get a hold of this person, how do I deal with them? I just mm -hmm. can't knock everybody out, you yeah. know? And if right. I, I, if I do hit them, I need to control them on the way to your ground. I don't want them to fall. Right. You know? I want to place them on the ground because if, if I happen to knock somebody out and they hit their head and they die there, right. We got problems. And then yep. it goes on to, this is a big one, and I do this different than anybody I've ever seen. Multiple attacker, how to control that. And like I said, mm. bad guys hang out with bad guys. You're not fighting one, you're fighting multiples. And right. when I show you this, and when you experience it, it's a, oh, oh, baby, it's good stuff. It's, it, it, wow. it's, and then we've got the, don't, the, the, the checklist that, you know, you make sure you got everything in check. Also, I'm throwing, you know, I do mobility, I do um, Phoenix Fit. So I'm like, okay. Nice. Throw some mobility in here. Everybody needs to be able to move. If you're starting to train, you're going to need this. Mm -hmm. Then our bonuses, anti-grappling. Okay. Now, what does that mean? All right. There's so many people doing jujitsu. I know if I get in a match and get on the ground, or get on in a, in a situation, get on the ground with a guy that knows jujitsu, I know what he's going to do. Yeah. Well, I know how to stop that and finish him in a way that it blows every grappler's mind I've ever done it to. They're like, mm. that is insane how brutal that is. Wow. And it, it will finish. But they're doing exactly what they've been trained to. And they've done it yep. thousands and thousands of times. And I know they're going to do it. And when they do it, they're trapped. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And this is the, the everyday carry. You know, that's uh, it goes deep into that. Street mm. boxing, teach you how to use the hands on the street. Yep. And this is this is some other stuff that goes with that and how to practice it. This is the yep. the personal protection law with Chad Thompson. That's the interview. Uh -huh. And this is the big deal here. We're going to go through each one of these sections after you've gone through it. And I'm going to say, okay, what's the questions you got? What do mm -hmm. I need to fix? Let me see if I can't get you closer to that 20%. Yeah. You know, because if you know the 80 20 rule, we're wanting to work on that 20%. Right. And this is the big deal the pace planning module which is a safety planning for everything that we do. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's called Pace E. After using it, I've expanded it and added the expectations of Pace. If you're not familiar mm -hmm. with that, well, I'll, I'll show you that sometime. But yep, yeah. so that's that's wow. it right there, man. Um, nice. That's exciting, yeah. man. Yeah. And this is what it, I mean, Solid. This, is, this is what it looks like inside. Um, nice. See. So, and that's great that people could access it who aren't local. Yeah, this is for and so any so if you're in Australia or the Philippines or you know um, Hawaii, you can access it. Yep. 
So now what Love I'm it. teaching right here is what I call the interview stance. Okay. Mm. Now what this means is the problem with your, when you're dealing with somebody in a street situation is where do you put your hands? Yeah. Okay. Cause you're like, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, if I, so I stand like this, right. And this mm. is where you're, you're far, you're far away. Okay. Yeah. All right. As you get closer, then I start, and these are very handy. You can groom them. Okay. Yeah. But what that's done, that's moved me into a boxing stance where I'm not covered to be hit from the side. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's far away. He comes far away. He gets closer. I stick this up and I'm stepping into a fighting stance. Okay. Mm -hmm. If he touches that hand, then the hammer fist slides right down to it. And that's mm. my first strike. Mm. Wow. So, but, but, and, and practice that. I want you to do it in, in, in the grocery store or whatever is when you're standing there looking, if when somebody gets closer, go directly into adjusting your hat or adjusting this because you're already covered. Yeah. So. Right, right. Interesting. Wow. So good insight, man. Uh, and then, get, I mean, I'm, I'm getting my lesson. There's all kinds of good stuff in here, man. It just, it really is. And it's, it's, it's a lifetime of work of me yeah. getting rid of what doesn't work and what works practically. Right, right. That, that makes sense. That's pretty cool. Wow, man. It's, it's cool to hear you. I mean, even what you said at the beginning of the whole interview, but even with, with CRI and, and with Daddy Fight Club, though, as well, it's like, wow, the story behind it and, and how it started and, and, and to see that it's your life's working. But you also have an, you've, you have a mastery of it where you can teach it, but you could also teach the safety around it. That's great leadership. Yeah, because you don't want to get people. To, you don't want to. You don't want anyone to get hurt in the whole scenario, you know. Especially those who are being attacked. But even for those who are attacking, you don't want them falling on their head and, and dying. Yeah, for yeah. example, you know so so that I, that makes total sense. And and really, that whole scenario that happened the other night. I mean, guys were like, I mean, and they all know me. Why didn't you take him out? I said, Yeah. And I and I actually told my wife. She was like, I wish you would have done what you do. And I'm like, Let's talk about this tomorrow morning. Mm. And we woke up. In the bed, and I rolled over and said, "Hey, baby." She said, "Hey." I said, "How are you feeling?" She said, "I'm feeling great." I said, "Me too." I said, "Look at that. Mm. Nothing's hurt. Everything's yeah. in place. We ain't got to worry yeah. about the law coming because I hit this dude, and he's no legal, no, no nothing. Legal issues. I don't yeah. even look like an ass, you know. Yeah. Because I was, I went overboard to de-escalate and move. Now, of course, I was ready. Right. I went too far, but. Yeah. I was like, this is the key. This is what we want from Daddy Fight Club. You know, mm -hmm. my daughter calls me. She's like, look, I just got boxed in in front of CVS by three cars. Mm. I was like, what'd you do? She said, well, I had I had it set up the way you taught me. And mm. I got, got out. She said, two wow. guys got out of the car, came to my uh, vehicle. She said, but because if I was if I was not following what you told me to do, I'd have been boxed in. She wow, said, he said I put that Jeep in it and I rolled, and that's wow. that is the key is we train all this and learn all this stuff to hope that never have to use it. Right, right. Man. But then when you can start putting that into your kids and they can see stuff, and you know it's it's just amazing. I mean, it really is, and yeah. it's this is what I've done right here is I wish I could have bought it years and yeah. years and years ago. Right, it's taken me going through a whole bunch of stuff that would not work to get to the point that, okay, I can stand behind this and I can change right. people's lives and you can go home and you can teach your kids. Okay. This is mm. something I want you to, I want you to do this with you, with your son um, mm -hmm. and your family. Next time you go out, I want you to play the red shirt game. Okay. Mm. Tell right, me. Now, now this is a drill for situational awareness. Yeah. You're going to count how many red shirts you see. Okay. And you don't think there's that many red shirts. Right. But what that does is that trains you to start looking at everybody. Wow. You know, you know and when you look at somebody, what's the most important place to look? You know? Uh, the head, the hands, the hands. You know why the hands? Why? They are the thing that kill you. Yeah. They pull, they stab, they mash a button. It's what the hands are doing. Yeah. Okay. Where's the next place you look? 
You check um, the and as a here's, here's the thing as a choreographer, I'm thinking <laughs> mobility wise, hands for sure. Um, also, I think feet. But then I'm like, should I say feet or above the head, like eyes or anything like that? But I also think feet for some reason, because you have to position your feet the feet, before you do feet, something. Feet is in there for sure. Mm. But it goes hands, waist. Okay. Waist. Uh. Because that's where most weapons are hidden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole, on when we're in the weapons area, then we start looking bad guys usually don't have good holsters. So there's telltale signs that they're they're checking them. Then then it's bad. And but the whole thing that we're running, you know, that yeah. little green button on there, it tells me what I need to do, and mm. it switches me on. It gets me out of, okay, oh, it's a bad day at work, good day at work, getting home, whatever. It switches me. Okay, I need to be switched on and present in this moment. Right. And then you start seeing how wow. people. Fall. I mean, it's so much fun. But yeah. the, when I went to CRI, there the the guy that helped Bruce. I was with him the day early and I'm like, Hey man, I'll help you do anything. So we go to Lowe's and we run around and we're grabbing stuff. And I think it was 57 red shirts. We tra we counted together that day. Hmm. And it's like, he's like, man, I've seen stuff I've never seen before. Wow. Yeah. And that's a big deal, you know, because by looking for a red shirt, you're looking at everybody. Yeah. You're paying attention. Yeah. To the details. Wow. Yeah, that's wow, that's powerful, man. Man. Woo. This is good stuff, C Ray. This is deep, man. Yeah, it's 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 life changing. I mean, it's life changing. It, it really is. It it will save your life and your family's. You know? Yeah, I will do that. I will do that exercise for sure. I need to get I need to get down with Daddy Fight Club. It's about <laughs> time. It's been a long time. I know, Kyle, baby. Need to make it happen. Yep. Need to jump yep. on board. Yep. Yep, it's 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 oh, it's there. Man. And right now, what is so cool uh, at, at this point of when I'm I'm launching, it's like there'll be so much more of the live Zoom stuff because mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm, the concept is just like my mind map is yeah. I'm going to take what you give me as questions and I must spin it back in and put it and make it grow. So the baseline right. here is that first. Okay, this is my first layout of it. Now, mm -hmm. as it grows and you ask me questions and we do stuff and I was like, oh, let's do this, you know, and then it's just going to keep going. So it's not just a one time buy thing. It's like, OK, I can come back and check and see what's updated. And the, mm -hmm. and I, the whole community is going to be built behind it. And I really I really want to build it as a movement. You know, I want nice. to do church groups and all. just I want to teach as many people as I can. And, you know, the state of the world right now, we need to know. <laughs> we need to know. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Now I was gonna ask. Now was a question I was gonna ask you too. Like, what do you think of the unique challenges people face when it comes to self defense and, and personal safety? Like, what are some unique challenges? Well, you know, it's funny because there, there's, there's two things. Normally, when I start really diving in and talking to, ninety percent of people's like, I've always wanted to do it. Mm. Why didn't you? Well, it's gonna take too long. Mm. I didn't have enough time. Didn't yeah. have enough money. I was going to do it later or I don't have the ability. Yeah. Well, the way I teach is I teach like water, whatever vessel you are, I pull it into you and we make it work for you. Love it. If you've got one leg, we're going to make it work for you. If you've got yeah. no legs in your wheelchair, we will make it work for you. You know, yeah. it's not like back in the day, if you did Taekwondo, it's because you were flexible. Yeah. Because you could really kick high. You know, you had yeah. that was it. All that doesn't matter. What it is is what your what your traits are. I can take it and go, okay, this is what's going to work for you. That's why that zoom is so important. You know. Yeah. Plus that builds com camaraderie too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is mm. that depending on the age of the children and, and and in the family, yeah. One, I've been lucky to be looked at as a protector from my family. Yeah. I mean, that really, that really is amazing. You know, that, that first time that when my daughter was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I went to pick her up and she's like, dad, this is at her granny's house. I said, dad, come here. I got a new favorite movie. It's the turtles. And I'm like, baby, I got some stuff to show you when I get home. I never told her mm -hmm. I was in the turtles movie, you know, That's and right, so yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had my hood. My, and right then I was instant protector, superhero, you know, 
And and that went we went from there to Disney, you know, a couple of months later, and we're watching um the Star Wars uh display, you know, and they're acting and doing this stuff. And Charlie leaped reached over and hit this lady. She says, and lady says, Hey, I got a secret. Can you keep a secret? She said, Yes, ma'am. My daddy's a Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. You know, and and that's, that's cool. the way I've tried to train them. That's the way I try, you know, to to put instill this into them as okay, do this the way I would do it. You know, yeah. so super cool, super sense. empowering, and it builds such a, a a neat thing for them to pass on to their kids. Right, right, right. You know, right. and that's the big deal. What what if it's not absolutely? It doesn't save your son's life, but what if it says saves your grandson's life because y'all learn this right that's true very true man i tell you man see right now i got a question for you so like how can these uh self-defense skills with daddy fight club how can they translate into everyday interactions like you know whether even personal or professional you know because we're walking through life either we're in, in a professional setting or a personal setting going to get groceries and things like that well, I'm going to give you a, a non-professional answer mm. to that first one. And yeah. then I'm going to give you the professional one. <laughs> okay. I, the first one, as an engineer, I had a boss that was not real happy with himself mm. or me. Yeah. And I was teaching jujitsu at UL, the Underwriters Laboratory, to mm. all the engineers that, that, I, that we were in friends, you know. And he came by one day and he was like, what if we all jump you? And I'm like, Ashuk? His name was Ashuk Patel. I said, Ashuk, I said, are you going to be number three in the line? Because I'll make it number four. Mm. I said, you're going to be number five. I guarantee you I'll make it number five. Whenever you want to start, mm. go. And he was like, I said, Shook, they know I know what I can do. Mm. You're going to be first in line. So that was the that was the ego kind of I okay you're gonna do that, yeah. But on the other side of it, you would never know that I know anything, right? You would I I, I don't have the ego, I right. don't, I carry myself with confidence because I know what I can do, but I don't want to do it. Just like the guy that that was trying to attack me, I he had a pocket knife in his right pocket, he had a bulge in his left pocket could have been a gun maybe it was a wallet but it lets me carry myself because i postured up on him you know to, to test him and and yeah. he was committed but he just wanted to sucker punch so it really if you know you can hurt someone you don't have to be mean you right. know right. And that's probably not the most poetic way to say it but that's, I hear what you mean, though. That's right. That, 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 I mean, if, I, I know what I can do, and, and, and I've done it, and so I don't have to, I don't have to be, a, I'd be nice, you know? Right. I love that. That makes sense. Well, and you want to, you got you got to be responsible, too, so yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Well, yeah. I, I don't know who taught me this, but it was like, wait with the patience of God and the glory of God and strike with the vengeance of the devil if you have to. Hmm. Yeah. And so I try, I try yeah. to stop at the first part <laughs> and stay there. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, but that's Hopefully that that's, part. That's the that's the mindset. You know, yeah, that is right there. But right. it's hard to be a real good man if you can't be real dangerous and control it. Mm. You can be real, real dangerous and not control it. That's terrible. Yeah. But you need to learn how to be really, really dangerous and control it. Right. And I'm stealing that's that nice. from somebody. Um, one of the military guys, but anyway, that's yeah. That, that, you gotta write a you gotta write a blog about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and the the blog's coming up. They got the images right, so it's C Ray Knowles slash blog. So that's that's uh, gonna be spinning up too. Put a lot of stuff mm. on there. Love it, love it, love your you love your website too. So C Ray, so if one is like heard this podcast, our audience heard the podcast. They're like, okay, there, there's some dads in the house, right? Like, what can I do to learn this program? What can I do to be a part of this program? Where can one find you online? Line. CRayKnowles.com is my general site. Shows you everything I do. DaddyFightClub.com is where Daddy Fight Club is. 
and the launch page would be daddyfightclub.com slash go. So that's where um, it's active right now. I've got to make a few tweaks on it, and I'm getting ready to roll it out as of, well, it should be tomorrow. So we will, we, we're at the point of, okay, it's the first sale. And like I said, there's a lot, a lot of bonuses in there and stuff I'm going to add because of being able to, I want you to know what I know. Right. You know, right. and I want you to pass it along. Right. Love it. And then the, then the three day intensive is going to be crazy. I'm, that's going to be sick. I'm planning the first one of those that's going to be at the Raleigh Convention Center in Raleigh. And I picked that because a great venue, close to the airport, you know, lots of stuff to do. You know, I've got my own studio here, but I don't want anybody to come to this town. You know, I want them to go someplace that's nice. They can get right into a good airport, right out. And mm. it will be a three-day weekend, you know, a long weekend. And we will do uh, some on-the-street stuff, some some of the situational awareness and training and looking at. It's 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 amazing. It really Solid. is. Solid. Woo! Well, C-Ray, thanks for being part of the podcast again. And like it. it was great having you aboard. Always love you, brother. Always love you. Thank you, man. Love you too, brother. There you have it. One life. Stay ready. That's right. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. And if you haven't already, please be so kind and give us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.